Hi Internet, today I'm happy to announce that I've just released a new version of Kandu, the cross-platform Pi menu which I'm currently developing. And in this short video I want to show you what's new in this version. Alright, let's jump right into it. I will just open up Kandu's change doc here. It's um, surprisingly long this time, so you can also have a look at the change log. There's lots of um, tweaks, fixes and quality of life improvements. And yeah, in this video I just want to show you the most important changes and additions. Yeah, first and for foremost we now have gamepad support. So if a menu is open and you have attached a gamepad, like for instance this Xbox controller here, you can use the analog sticks to highlight an item and then just use any button to select the highlighted item. This is pretty straightforward and um, actually quite fun to navigate through the menu this way. You can also use the X button to, to close the menu and you can use the B button to go back to the parent menu. And yeah, if you don't like this button binding, you can also um, use your config.json file to remap the buttons. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that there are a couple of cool use cases for Kandu where gamepad support actually becomes in really, really handy. All right, next we have the paste text action. And yeah, this simply does what the name says. So you can take any text, for instance, let's just copy this text here and create a new paste text action here. We have it here and yeah, in here you can just type any text. We now will take this long paragraph here. And if we have any text editor open, for instance, we can take VS Code here. You can now, for instance, in here, um, execute this action and this long text will be pasted in here. Yeah, and this is useful if you happen to um, type the same text many, many times a day, then this action will come in very handy. Yeah, another new feature is that the menu supports now base 64 encoded icons. This will be especially useful in the future once we have an API to open menus programmatically. But I'm already today aware of several people who generate their menus using scripts. And yeah, using base64 encoded icons is pretty useful because then you can directly embed the icons into your menu configuration. And what is kind of funny is that this base64 encoded icons, they also support animated GIFs. Um, I can simply show this to you, for instance, Let's take the well-known party blob here. I will just copy this link and use an online tool to um, convert this to an base64 string. Just copy this here. And now in the menu, we can just, for instance, edit our paste text item here. We choose as a icon theme base64 and paste in here this um, encoded string. That's an incredibly long string, but yeah, well, it doesn't matter. Here you have now the party blob. And if you open the menu, you will have a party blob, which is kind of funny. And yeah, that's a pretty easy way to um, get an icon into Kandu without having to create an icon theme first. And it even supports animated icons, which is kind of cool, I think. All right. Next, we now have um, version information in the sidebar. This is also pretty cool. Down here in the development tab, you can see now which backend is currently in use and also version numbers for Kandu itself and also for some of the libraries used by Kandu, which will be important if you, for instance, report a bug. And then we have a couple of new um, settings, which for now are only available in the config dot json file so they are not exposed in the user interface yet they will be in the future but for now you have to edit your config.json file to modify those settings and there are a couple of new th settings um, i will highlight just a few here for instance you can now modify the fade in and fade out duration of the menu and most importantly you can set both of them to zero if you want and if you do this, the menu will just show up instantaneously and hide instantaneously. 
And this is cool because, well, some actions, they are only executed after the fade out animation is finished. And if you set this duration to zero, um, those actions will execute much, much faster. So, for instance, if we have a window open, let's take a calculator here. Closing this will now feel much, much more responsive because the action is executed instantaneously. And let's have a look at another new setting that's, for instance, down here, those show sidebar and show editor buttons. So you can set both of them to false. And if you do this, the show sidebar button here and the show editor button down here, they are both invisible. They are still there and you can still click them and you can also use them to edit the, uh, to enter the editor. <laughs> there we have our party blob here but they won't clutter your screen. Let's set them back. Yeah, now the new feature is the so-called fixed stroke length setting here. And if you set this to a value greater than zero, for instance, like 200 pixels, then this will change how marking mode and turbo mode behave. So usually in marking mode or turbo mode, an item is selected as soon as you stop your movement or as soon as you make a sharp turn. And this will not happen anymore if this fixed stroke length is set. Instead, an item will be selected once you drag an item more than those, for instance, 200 pixels away from the root menu. So if I now click here and drag up here, the item will be selected as soon as I pass this 200 pixels threshold. And this makes especially those straight line selections much, much easier. So for instance, this VS Code item here this is pretty hard to select with ordinary marking mode because you have to make a stop here and then continue the movement to get there. And now with this fixed stroke length set, I can just make a movement like this, a continuous straight movement and will be able to select this here. Yeah, I think that's it for now. You can have a look at the change look. There are a couple of other quality of life improvements here and tweaks and fixes. Um, especially there are a couple of those more or less hidden features, hidden settings in the config.json file, which will be exposed in the user interface once we have a new menu editor in the future. There are also several translation updates. So thanks to all the translators, you're doing a really awesome job here. And I'm looking forward to new translations for Kandu coming in the future. Yeah, that's it for now. I hope you like those updates. Um, in the next version of Kandu, I will most likely focus on the standalone menu editor. So making the menu editor a separate window. Um, this has been requested like dozens of dozens of times. So yeah, this will become a reality in the next version. And if you want to get notified, just subscribe here on YouTube or follow me on my ko page where you can also support the development of Kandu. The link is um, below this video in the description. Yeah, and you can also join our Discord server. The link to that is also below this video in the description and you can discuss there the development of Kandu, share your ideas, your thoughts, and maybe also just show what you're using Kandu for. Um, I'm really interested in seeing what people are doing with this piece of software. All right, I think that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.